Good day everyone. Welcome to Learn with MN. In this video, we will discuss the next tool, which is the Mesh tool. The tool here after the Gradient tool is the Mesh tool. Like a gradient tool, it is also used to make and edit gradients. The gradient tool is used to create linear or radial gradients depending on the desired effect, like this. While on the other hand, a mesh gradient typically refers to a more complex type of gradient. They are often used to create realistic shading, lighting effects, or complex color variations, like this one. To apply a mesh gradient to any object, there are two ways. One is to open the Mesh tool from the toolbar and double-click on the object. The second way is to select the object, open the Fill and Stroke tab from here, and select the Mesh Gradient option here. When a Mesh Gradient is applied to an object, you will see two kinds of nodes. One is a diamond-shaped stop. Each stop is used to change the color of the gradient. Just click on any stop to select it, and apply any color, it will change its color on the gradient, like this. Second are white circle handles. These are used to change the shape of the gradient. When you click on any stop or its circle handle, they are changed to arrow shapes. By moving each, you can alter the shape of the gradient, like this. By default, the mesh tool makes a one by one grid. That means it has one row, one column, and four color stops to make mesh gradients. For a square shape, it will be like this. This is a row, and this is a column. For the circle, the grid will be like this. This is a row, and this is a column. But you can change the number of rows and columns at any time. There are two ways to do that. The first is by using double click. When you double click on the edge, it will add a row or column depending on which edge you have clicked. To add a row, Double click on the vertical edge, like this. And to add a column, double click on the horizontal column, like this. Now, this mesh has two rows and two columns. Similarly, for a circle, this is the square grid. So, these edges will be used to add rows, like this. And these edges will be used to add columns, like this. This method is used to add new rows or columns at any time after creating the mesh gradient. The second way is by using the rows and column option in the tool control bar. This option is used to specify the number of rows and columns for the new mesh. For example, if you want a new mesh with three rows and five columns, then type three in rows and five in columns. Now, double click on the object and the gradient will be applied with a three by five grid like this. Now, let's discuss different options for the mesh gradient tool. The first option which is by default selected is for creating a mesh gradient. Select this option if you want to create a mesh gradient. The next option is for the conical gradient. When you create a conical gradient, the gradient nodes are going in a circular direction instead of a rectangular grid. If you move the center stop, you will find it has more underneath it. If you keep on moving, you will see that a conical gradient is just like a mesh gradient which is distorted around to make a conical gradient effect. You can assign each with a unique color. To move all center stops at a time, select them with a click drag over them, and then move them all easily. In a conical gradient, all these rings are rows and the slices are columns. Double clicking on the slice cut will add a new row, like this. Similarly, double click on any ring will add a new column, like this. This type of gradient is useful for making art like color wheels, CD drives, etc. The next two options tell where the gradient will be applied. This option, which is by default selected states that gradient will be applied on objects fill. This option will apply the gradient on the object stroke, like in these examples. Next are these two options. This option is used to convert the curved selected segment into a straight line. For example, we want this curve to be a straight line. Then select it by clicking on it, or select the stops making this curve, and click this option. The curve is now converted to a straight line. If you notice, both these stop circle handles are hidden after conversion to a straight line. 
If you want to see them, then click this option again will show it. Again clicking this option will hide handles like this, and so on. The next option is different from the previous one. It makes the selected edges elliptical by adjusting the length of the handles. For example, we have changed the shape of this gradient by using circle handles, but it is not smooth. To make its edges smooth, select all segments, and click this option. As you can see, it has made the edges smooth and elliptical by changing the length of the handles. The next option with a dropper icon has a very powerful effect. It is used to assign the color to stop that is underneath it. For example, the square beneath this mesh gradient has a green color. If I select this stop and click this option, then it will be assigned with a green color like this. This option helps you to make realistic shadings on your art using any image, like this one. When you select any object, a dashed rectangle appears around it. This is called the bounding box. When you edit the gradient, it is possibility that it is smaller or it is going outside the bounding box. To fit the gradient inside the bounding box, this option is used. For example, this gradient is not exactly the size of a bounding box. To fit it inside the bounding box, click this and it will be resized like this. This warning sign gives you some important information about mesh gradients. It tells you that syntax may change, and web browser implementation is not guaranteed, as mesh gradients are part of SVG2. So as a suggestion, it is suggested to convert it into a bitmap for the web, and export it as a PDF for printing. The last option is the smoothing option. By default, Coons is selected. In this, there is no smoothing across the grid boundaries. While the second option by Cubic adds smoothing across the grid boundaries, like this. That was all about the Mesh Gradient tool and its different options. If you have any queries, feel free to write in the comments section or contact us on our website or social media, their links are in the description. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon, so you don't miss any updates. Thank you for watching.